this book is, is, is very personal for me um, and represents my own personal journey, both through uh, the mental health field and through um, spirituality. And I think a bookstore like this uh, melds that, that very well, so it's always a pleasure to be able to speak at a place like this. OCD is often called the doubting disease, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, it manifests itself in a variety of ways, and we'll talk about that tonight. Um, obsessions and compulsions. The obsessions are simply what-if thoughts, usually very catastrophic, usually very horrific in nature. Um, they tend to get physically stuck in the OCD brain, um, which is one of the things, by the way, that sets OCD apart from just everyday uncertainty and everyday fear. We're going to talk about the distinctions throughout the night. And I'll be bouncing back and forth between the OCD world and the non-OCD world. One of the key distinctions is that those of us who are battling OCD are battling a biochemical brain disorder. Um, there's very little doubt about that these days. Uh, thanks to brain imaging, PET scans, and, and so forth, MRIs, uh, the brain scientists are actually able to see some very significant differences between the OCD brain and the non-OCD brain, both structurally and functionally, which is very interesting. It's interesting that the brain itself is different structurally, and it also operates a little <coughs> differently. Um, that's both sobering and reassuring for somebody with OCD, by the way. On the one hand, it's a bit of an issue for us to accept that there is something different about our brains. On the other hand, I think for a lot of us, it helps us understand why we do what we do. One of the, the, the hallmarks of OCD is that those of us who battle these obsessions and compulsions are acutely and painfully aware of just how ridiculous the thoughts are and our responses to them are which is the good news and the bad news in that it, it tends to lead to a great layer of frustration, which is why um, the comorbidity, if you will, between OCD and depression, clinical depression, is very high. Um, it's incredibly frustrating to see yourself um, acting in, in, in ways that you yourself know to be nonsensical, but that is one of the hallmarks of this disorder. So. Those of us with clinical OCD um, are, are getting those thoughts stuck in our head. And, and these thoughts are really, what, what I explore in this new book, for example, that these thoughts are, are nothing more than, than fear-based doubts magnified a <coughs> hundredfold, okay? And literally getting stuck in the brain. So you have this what if thought. What if my hands aren't clean? Um, and I refer to the doubt bully. You'll hear me talk a lot tonight about the doubt bully. The doubt bully is just my externalizing of OCD. And so you know, I don't want to sound offensive about this, but those of us in the OCD world are taught to externalize our OCD. I don't hear voices. I don't see a little doubt bully over here. Uh, but I have learned to externalize my OCD in a very constructive way with the doubt bully so that it gives me an entity to, to talk back to and fight back against. And this is a very common approach. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's that about doubt? Doubt bully. A doubt bully. Bully. A bully like uh, you think about... I know what a bully is, but okay. what's the doubt bully? The, the, a the doubt bully is, is my metaphoric way to think about OCD. <coughs> I imagine the doubt bully posing the what-if questions. So if the what-if question is, what if your hands aren't clean, I imagine the doubt bully saying to me, Jeff, what if your hands aren't clean? It's just a way of externalizing the OCD. So the doubt bully suggests a, a, a what-if question, and that really is the first thing you need to know about um, OCD, is all those, those obsessions start with what-if, and they end with some very catastrophic, um, extremely disturbing thought. So what if your hands aren't clean isn't enough? What if, because your hands aren't clean, Jeff, um, you shake hands with this gentleman afterwards and give him the Ebola virus? <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, well, gosh, Jeff, nobody has ever had the Ebola virus in North America. Does it matter? Okay. Um, in all seriousness, logic, you can throw it out the door with OCD. I'm a reasonably intelligent guy. Um, I, I can usually sort out intellectually what is reality and what is not in terms of possibility, but OCD is all about emotion. And emotion 
uh, I say intellect actually, which is the opposite of that. Intellect is the bully little brother of emotion, okay? So um, when we get into the OCD trap, we are dealing with emotionally charged what if questions and you can forget reality. Because it's not about the reality, it's about the discomfort of the uncertainty. You're gonna hear me talk about that a lot tonight, the discomfort of uncertainty. That is at the crux of every single problem with OCD.